thank you. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Dimitri Kopetsis. Like, uh, like David said, I work as a correspondent. I'm a journalist, primarily writing about uh, privacy and technology issues. Uh, always interested, interested about the ethics of technology. What does technology do with us and do with our lives? And tonight I want to talk to you about a war that has been raging for 40 years, but you probably weren't even aware that it was raging. And this war is being fought for us by two different parties that both say, say that they uh, have our best interest in mind. So it's, it's kind of a complicated thing, actually. I want to argue tonight that um, privacy is always mentioned when it comes to cryptography, but privacy is not the most important issue, I think, when it comes to cryptography. And that's maybe a strange thing to say uh, from somebody who always writes about privacy, but let me explain. Uh, this war that has been raging is called the Crypto Wars. Has any uh, of you heard about the Crypto Wars? Uh, presumably we are in the fourth Crypto War right now. It's, it depends on how you count. But uh, like Jan showed in his uh, presentation, um, cryptography used to be all about hardware. You saw the Enigma machine that was used in the Second World War, uh, developed by Alan Turing and a lot of colleagues of him. And um, cryptography was basically hardware. But our world is uh, all about software nowadays. Uh, software is really important. In the 70s, uh, cryptography, uh, and the problem with that it was hardware was that cryptography was basically only available for governments and really big corporations like IBM. And that changed in the 1970s by uh, two uh, scientists, one called uh, Mr. Diffie, and the other one was called Mr. Hellman. And they developed an algorithm called Diffie Hellman that uh, uh, basically uh, made uh, 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 cryptography available for software. And it was pretty easy to use uh, for computer scientists, not for average people. But uh, the, the United States really got, uh, really got angry about that. And they threatened the, those people, the, Mr. Diffie and Hellman, with lawsuits. And they said they couldn't publish about it because it was considered too dangerous to give cryptography <coughs> You can consider that the, the first uh, crypto wars. The second crypto wars was fought in the, in the late 80s when Phil Zimmerman, which is a, an American scientist, he developed uh, PGP, which is called Pretty Good Privacy. And PGP is still being used today to encrypt your uh, emails. Uh, time said he had a very difficult time encrypting his emails. He's using probably PGP, I think. If. It's basically the standard for encrypting your email, and it's really, really bad. I know something about cryptography and I've lost about 10 keys and, and still get emails from people using my old keys that I can't open anymore and I lost a whole cache of emails. It's, it's really terrible. Phil Zimmerman was also uh, threatened with lawsuits and he couldn't export his uh, keys, uh, his algorithm to produce those keys. Um, what he did was pretty uh, simple but pretty amazing. He just printed the code for his algorithm in a book and you cannot forbid the export of a book because that's free speech and the free speech is all in America. So in that way he got his algorithm uh, across, the, uh, across the ocean to the European countries so that everybody could use it. And it was really necessary around that time because it was the same time that the internet was starting to do. And internet cannot function without proper encryption. If you log in to your bank account, you need strong encryption because there are plenty of criminals out there who want to step between you and your bank and discover what you got on your uh, bank account and try to steal that. If you want to send uh, uh, messages to people, sometimes you need encrypted messaging, especially governments. If uh, the government has all kinds of e-services, they need some strong encryption. So strong encryption is ubiquitous everywhere. And uh, in the mid-1990s, there were still export uh, controls on uh, encryption, on cryptography. It was uh, the case in United States, but also in Europe. You still couldn't export cryptography to other countries. Uh, that changed in the early 2000s. Uh, the internet was becoming too big, and the pressure of the scientific community was too large, and companies, uh, sorry, governments couldn't resist the pressure anymore. And everybody thought the crypto war, the third crypto war in the 90s, was won. We finally won the crypto war. But then came Edward Snowden. And it was in 2013, in September 2013, that the New York Times, The Guardian, and Propaganda released the existence of, a, uh, of an NSA program 
classified as a program called Pool Run. And that really shocked the whole technical community because um, what they found out was that the NSA deliberately weakened uh, cryptographic standards. And it sounds very technical, but uh, what it kind of did was uh, everybody got a if you want to compare it to the real world, everybody gets a lock from the government, but they uh, know how to make the key of that lock. <coughs> and everybody was really shocked. Uh, even big companies like Google and Apple were shocked. And they vowed to make better cryptography available for everybody. So Apple uh, now has a, 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 the option on the iOS, the new iOS, to encrypt all your data by default, and that you have the encryption key. So even when the government comes knocking at Apple's door, you cannot, they cannot give you the data. Uh, Google is trying to do the same with end-to-end -end encryption for Gmail, for instance. So, if you use Gmail, you can uh, encrypt all your messages. Only Google can read it, of course, but they have to make a copy in some way. So, this fight is still going on. Basically, it's the fourth, uh, fourth crypto war raging. And the uh, law enforcement agencies are really pissed about what Google and what Apple are doing. And the FBI director James Comey recently said that the FBI is going dark. We cannot see anymore yet what the, the bad guys, of course, always the pedophiles and the terrorists, are doing when everybody starts using encryption. And Apple is making that possible for everybody. So, um, David Cameron recently said after the Charlie Hebdo shooting that uh, it was a bad idea that. Messenger apps like WhatsApp would use encryption. The government should always have a key. So basically, they said encryption is fine, but we as a government always need a back door. And there are a couple of reasons, basically four reasons, why that is a bad idea. The first one was really obvious because it's a privacy issue, like I said. Uh, you should be able, if I send you, uh, if, for instance, if uh, a source uh, comes to me and has some uh, really important information. The best way to contact me is by mail, because the IVA or the police cannot open my mail. About two or three ministers uh, have to sign off on that. But if they want to see my email, then uh, a district attorney is enough to get my email to my email. So there's a big difference there. So cryptography is good for privacy, of course. But uh, there's another problem. Uh, you need strong security for internet. And one of the ways that uh, that, that was uh, recently shown why that is so necessary is the Freak Attack. The Freak Attack was carried out in March by a couple of scientists. There were posh, nice scientists, there weren't ra radicals or anything, but they found a way to hack the side of the NSA by using, forcing their server to use a bad type of cryptography. And the irony was, it was the NSA who put that kind of crappy cryptography out there in the first place in the 1990s, but that kind of cryptography never went away. It lingers on with millions of servers on the internet. So, if a couple of uh, scientists can do that, uh, criminals can do that as well. So, basically, the NSA got hacked uh, by some, uh, uh, because of crappy cryptography they themselves uh, developed. But there's also an economic uh, problem with, with back doors. Um, the internet has really changed. There's a battle going on for a long time between what they call uh, bellheads and netheads. Bellheads are the people uh, coming from Bell, you know, uh, the telephony environment where all communication is centralized. So you have these big hubs where every, uh, all these information flows come together and they are really easy to tap. You only have a few machines that you can tap and you get to build the firehose of all communications. But the internet nowadays work completely different. They have peer to peer communications, for instance. Um, which uh, doesn't have a center. So there are all these companies developing new ways to, to, to communicate or to share things, to photo photography that doesn't use the centralized approach. They use another totally different approach. If you want to build back doors, you basically say you cannot do that anymore. You have to centralize that thing. So many companies would go back up. And the last thing is um, there is no going dark. Uh, the FBI says we are going dark, and uh, the Dutch police say also say we are going dark. Um, that's not simply not true. We are actually living in the golden age of surveillance. That's how they call it. There's so much data about um, with the Internet of Things, where all our devices are being connected to the Internet. They generate so much data 
there is such a big data trail, you can always intercept a lot of things. I can uh, uh, encrypt my email, for instance, but I cannot hide from anybody that I'm sending this email to you. So what they can do is, if they have a decryption order, for instance, with, which is something they are working on right now, they can force me to decrypt my messages. Um, so the real question, therefore, is I don't think uh, uh, there's not really a tension about between security and privacy. Uh, the real tension is between mass surveillance, where you can uh, basically uh, <coughs> check everybody's communications and targeted surveillance. That should be in the uh, if you uh, if you have backdoors, you can. It's really easy. You know, you can tap everything you want, and you can look for different patterns. Uh, Suspicious patterns in communications, and you can find the terrorists, which they never do. But if you target people, you can actually, you don't need those backdoors, you just look at the metadata, all these 